Welcome to this week's EMBN show. We've got a packed show lined up for you this week. We're taking a look at the e-bike from the legend himself, Valentino Rossi. Oh, it's a nice bike, that as well. Mm -hmm. uh, also, look at the perfect bike if your name is Dave. Uh, some more Where in the World entries and uh, loads of other great stuff for you lot. Right, time for some news then, and it looks like Valentino Rossi has launched two new e-bikes in his lineup. They're looking pretty pimped, Doddy, aren't they? Oh man, I tell you, what, even without no association with Valentino Rossi, VR46 just sounds cool. It does, but I'm looking at the silhouette of this bike, and you know yeah. what it reminds me of? Trek session. Is this a oh, Trek look, session? Looks like a Trek. Yeah, <laughs> haven't heard that before. But I think trek if you look a bit closer, Chris, you'll see on the chainstay it has a <laughs> has a pivot there. Whereas the Trek has an ABP. Does it? It does. Well, looking at the bike, it ticks quite a lot of the boxes. 750 watt hour battery. It's got the Bosch newest generation motor on there. 160 mil travel, aluminium frame, and there's two different builds of this bike. Again, offered this limited edition one, oh. which is only going to be 46 numbers. Coincidentally. Man, that thing just looks rude. It's <laughs> it so is. nice. And it's signed by him, yeah. himself as well. And the build of it as well, it's got some pretty high end components, hasn't it? Interesting to see, yeah, as well as it's got Olin shock absorbers on there mm -hmm. and the suspension fork, but it's got an O chain device on there. Yeah. Uh, essentially, it's like a drivetrain disconnect. Mm -hmm. you so, can, there's three settings on it, and it, basically, you get like a um, yeah, essentially you get a kickback, which is when you get rear axle path, basically, and it makes your, your upper chain get a bit longer, mm -hmm. and you feel that in the pedals under compression, so you can have a, an amount of drivetrain movement. So it floats, it's almost like yeah. a floating chain ring. Yeah, I mean, it does mean you have to overcome that very slightly mm -hmm. when you pedal for yeah. it to engage. I think it's three, six, and nine degrees of movement. Right. Right, it's an amazing system. Mm -hmm. I've never seen it spec on a bike before. I was going to say, what are you thinking of it on for e-bike use, obviously you've got a lot of power going through that front And there's moving times. parts in it as well. I don't know, to mm. be honest. But I think it's a bold move, like because it, it is a really cool part. Mm. De definitely stands out. And I think some of the other components on there, have got Crank Brothers Synthesis uh, e-bike wheels on there, Pirelli tires, but they've also actually got the inserts already on this wheel set, which I think is a pretty cool move. I've not seen well, that. Well, so you don't have to like, slot them in aftermarket. Yeah, yeah, I think that's a smart move. I think there's a few things that we've seen, you know, that uh, Rossi is doing to these bikes. Um, I think they're looking I mean, in honesty, I'm not sure mm. why many bikes don't come with the inserts on the rear, at least, anyway. Yeah, I don't it just know. would make sense. Yeah. yeah, a lot of them even don't even come tubeless from the factory, do they? So I think, yeah, I think it's a quite a good move there. I it's mean, that's kind of messy, though, to be fair, for mm. a lot of brands to mm. do that with the amount of shipping and stuff, but yeah. So what about this video uh, from, is it Cut Media, with the launch of the new Focus yeah. as well? So they yeah. launched a new range of budget bikes as well, full aluminium version. I think perfect if your name's Dave, right? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I think they nailed it in this video. Mm -hmm. uh, Dave's been searching for that thing to bring him, bring him back in the room in yeah. life. I think we've all been down that road at some point where you're Definitely. just looking for something. Mm -hmm. uh, they nailed it. It's a great video and the bike does look really cool it does, as well. It does, doesn't it? Yeah, 720 watt hour battery, aluminium frame, 150 mil travel, Shimano EP8 motor on there, 29 inch wheels uh, and pricing again, seeing some attractive pricing. So this comes in at £5,099 for that basic build. And um, they've also beefed up the bike quite significantly too. You've got 34.9 seat post on there. Um, it's got 150 kilos system and weight limit, so if you're a bit of a bigger guy, you're not going to yeah. be outside of that It's got reinforced wheels as well, isn't it? Yeah, I think it's a form. really interesting concept, yeah, just think... making it bomb-proof mm. for whoever's going to buy it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All-inclusive, no. really. Yeah, look, yeah, looking great. Uh, on Instagram, I've seen some pretty cool stuff as well. Oh. Did you see Sam Hill's kid on his Who uh, didn't Sam's see bike? that clip? <laughs> yeah, it was rad, wasn't it? Like, was that in the new proof? Yeah, on the... Gigawatt? Yeah, megawatt. Megawatt? Yeah. Gigawatt? I'll lose track now. <laughs> but he's looking <laughs> super smooth as well. He's got that Sam Hill style, just railing it. And I think, yeah. again, it's great to see kids out there on e-bikes and do some... Do you reckon you're going to see Sam do more e-bike stuff next year? 100%. I think that's what his focus is on. Yeah, I think. It'll be interesting to see He's what happens. He's a hungry man to get some uh, victories again, isn't he? Yeah, well, uh, I think he'll want to stitch up the EWS series one oh, more time, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. Uh, one rider I'm excited, really right. excited to see on e-bikes is Kurt Voorhees and... He's a legend just on Instagram, I think. Well, He's all over. He's hilarious. been around for years, And an he? incredible... Mm -hmm. He used to be a downhill elite racer. Yeah. World Cups, didn't he? Yeah, and he's sort and of And now gone. he just goons around, just yeah, having exactly. a laugh. Yeah, but the stuff I've seen him doing, he's doing this uphill, uh, basically an uphill run up wall ride to bar spin out. So yeah. it's kind of like bmx -y stuff, but he's, he's noticed how the e-bike's actually helping him you know, with that stuff he couldn't actually do on his older bike, you know, uphill run-ups into wall rides, things like that, and just general gooning around. I mean, check him out on here, just clipped in one pedal, spinning round, and yeah, 
I mean, let's stuff. not forget the main reason to check him out is to watch him ride that little recumbent mm. bike. Oh, God, <laughs> like, yeah. That's Bar just absolute spins, gold. Leg jumps. Yes, yeah. yeah, so if you don't follow Kurt on Instagram, Kurt Voris, check him out. He's It'll bring something animal. extra to your Instagram feed, Definitely. that's for sure. <laughs> and as well as subscribing to our videos, please don't forget that you can head over to our store and you can support us in other ways and you get something out of it too. Uh, we've got loads of great kit, tech t-shirts, we've got technical riding shorts, mm -hmm. casual stuff, there's loads between all the channels, to be fair. Mm -hmm. Obviously, the EMBN stuff is great, GMBN Tech and GMBN. Uh, get involved, help us out. It all works great. Coming up this week on EMBN, we've got a rad week of content as always, kicking things off on Friday. What we got, Dolly? Uh, six ways to overcome 25 kilometers now, which mm -hmm. actually genuinely interests me, because, uh, well, it's, uh, it's a speed it's limit. pretty tough sometimes, yeah. It can be, yeah. So the speed limit here in the UK is set to 25k. Sometimes can be a bit of a battle to get above that and maintain that speed, so giving you a few tips there. And on Sunday, we've got whether you should buy a new hardtail or buy a second-hand full suspension e-bike. So pros and cons of each out on the trail and, of course, the, the risks of doing so. Good we'll advice, explain you know. on this video. And on Monday, we're just taking a look at those e-bike service intervals about what you should service and when you should be doing it. Okay, time for some comments and questions from last week's show, which I believe was uh, ultralight e-bikes and parts shortage. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all, all suffered from that. Yep. Uh, first comments from Airsoft Cam Man. As for the parts shortage, the industry I'm involved in has a parts shortage too. Some retailers are breaking brand new items to sell out for parts. Uh, is this feasible with a mountain bike? Yeah, what have you thoughts on that? I see. I've seen the other way around, mm -hmm. actually. I've seen some bike dealers getting hold of frames and warranty frames and just building them up with anything they have. Just random to make a cocktail, complete bike. cocktail parts. Yeah. yeah, and I think it's great if you're getting people on bikes mm -hmm. and the bike shop can stay functioning, why not? Yeah, exactly. Um, so yeah, I guess people are breaking some stuff down, mm -hmm. but you couldn't really do that officially with mountain bike stuff because you have OEM manufacturing stuff. Exactly. The stuff is made to be spec'd on bikes. It's not made to be sold aftermarket. Mm. I'm sure some people might be doing that though. Yeah, for sure. And got Seal here, he says, the good thing about a part shortage is when shops have too many parts and demand goes back down, the bikes will be cheaper. Pretty cool that Seal rides an e-bike, isn't it? <laughs> and BA says, have to say when a part shortage, uh, this would be the perfect time for any company to drop, their, drop off any of the products for mm. new technology. So I suppose some of those manufacturers could be locked into contracts with those parts and what I think he's saying is that yeah. maybe they could swap, maybe they see a part maybe as being a bit of a weaker part on a bike, maybe upgrade it to a different brand, is what he's thinking. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's going to mm. happen, isn't it? I mean, something interesting I think that's happening in, in the other mountain bike world, so it's going to happen in uh, e-mountain bike world too, is there's going to be, I think there's going to be the end of the yearly bikes coming out. Mm -hmm. You know, new models will come out as and when, yeah, and well. you might you might buy the same model that you get, say, September 2022, mm -hmm. um, as your mate buys one in January 23. Right. It'll be the same bike, but you might have the latest SLX, or oh, okay. he might have the latest SLX, yeah, yeah, so you have yeah. the current one. Mm -hmm. It just replaces stuff as it changes. Right, so, interesting, yeah. Yeah, where you're just on the same bike. Yeah, yeah, that's And cool, I think it's it? kind of, that's really where things should go, rather than just chopping stuff every year. Yeah, yeah. I think that's obviously been initiated by that uh, shortage of parts, hasn't it? Yeah. That yeah, could be interesting. Nice. Right, it's time for Tech of the Week, and I think we've got something pretty interesting here, Dolly. What's this then? Um, essentially, onboard storage. Mm -hmm. So we've all seen people cut down water bottles and use them to chuck in like inner tubes and things like that. Yeah. And you can even buy a dedicated, uh, you call them caddies, bidons, uh, there's a number of things. Essentially, just a, a vessel to put stuff in on your bike. Right. But uh, Tom from Czech Republic, he's made his own one, essentially. And he's got a little video here with some funky music going on. And actually, it looks really nicely made, uh, so to be honest. It looks like there's different size sort of main sort of bodies to them. Yeah. And, and actually, storing stuff on a bike is a good mm -hmm. idea, whether you've got storage compartment or using a bottle cage. Yeah, the only thing is, obviously, some of the e-bikes are a bit struggling for space with, uh, yeah. obviously, for water bottles. So it's whether you take that tool box or tool bottle, or you take your water bottle, I suppose it's a compromise of both, isn't it? So mm. Surely you don't need to drink when you're on an e-bike? Well, because you don't work huh? yeah. at all. <laughs> but yeah, it's interesting stuff, isn't it, to see what Tom's got up to with his 3D printer. Love one of those, get involved, isn't it? Get I feel some... like we should we should have one here between all the channels. So we could, cool, wouldn't it? Yeah, it wouldn't it be like Ace if like, Tom could share like, the plans to it and then we'd mm. print one out here. Exactly. And actually show it off on the show, yeah, that'd be really good. cool. Yeah, nice. Hmm. Right, it's my favourite part of the show where we go where in the world to see where you guys have been riding your e-bike. We've got a bit of a, a Christmassy snow theme going on this week's show, right, Donnie? Yeah, yeah. so first up is from Karen in uh, the Yarra Valley in Victoria. 
Early morning ride on Christmas Day with my husband to celebrate our recent purchases. Nothing better is there than spending a bit of money and going out and enjoying it. I was going to say, can you imagine Christmas Day looking like that in the UK? Blue skies, amazing, like, looks like dry trails. I don't know how I feel about it. Mm. I feel like Christmas days I've got to be snowy or crap weather, so you're all like huddled indoors, yeah, yeah. but Warm maybe that's up. just because we're like old school. Well, this right. next picture might make you a bit more happy than this oh, is Chris. Oh, makes me very happy. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a cube stereo hybrid. He's out in the Clint Hills in the UK. Thought he'd see how capable an e-bike was in the snow. And just to say it was unreal and a super successful ride. And have you ever ridden an e-bike on snow? Oh, I haven't. Normally, to be honest, if it snows, mm. getting on a bike is the last thing on my mind. Oh, it's amazing. Drag out a snowboard or anything possible. Get, just honestly, to get fun, out but... on your e-bike if it snows. It is amazing fun. Yeah, so I good. reckon it probably would be a good laugh. Nice. Uh, check out this one then from Andrew. Another one. Yeah, a bit of a castle uh, in Stoke the background. Stoke on Trent. Yeah, Mal Malcop Castle in Stoke on Trent. Uh, he's got Mondrake, a crafty R. Uh, New, Year New Year's Eve ride started at Malcop Castle and continued down the gravel stone trail. Looks like a great place to ride, and uh, good to see you guys out there smashing it on your e-bikes in the snow. Another one from the Lake District, this mm -hmm. time from Paul with his Orbea Wild FS. Looks like been doing some bike packing actually. Epic two-day trip from home uh, with an overnight camper, horse water, and a push-up Gatescarth Pass, which was uh, type two fun. <laughs> <laughs> Pushing an e-bike is never fun. I can imagine with all that kit on. Uh, yeah, he must have been sweating quite yeah, a lot. Yeah, how many times you swear doing that? <laughs> <laughs> but I bet it's bloody cold camping out as well in that. Look. Wow, yeah, but it's dedicated. Definitely. Uh, last shot we got here is from Kyle. He's got a high bike hard seven 4.0 with modifications overlooking Muir of Ord in Rosshire in Scotland. Tidy. Alpha Hill Climb Challenge with a bit of a blizzard going on. <laughs> yeah, just a bit, a bit of white out going on. It almost looks totally whited out, isn't it? Yeah. That is a yeah, hard tail as well. Oh, crikey, got the mudguards going on. Looks, or, um, got the e double mudguard. Are e-bikes affected much by the cold? The temperature, yeah, I do notice it the range actually. Yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think especially if you start packing all that snow on the down tube, if you're yeah. going fast, actually puts it into a bit of a, a, a freeze situation. I did notice, yeah, my range wasn't as good. Um, it's, yeah, you just get numb, cold feet, and you know. Well, yeah, same as you. I just made physically with the battery yeah, power. Yeah, yeah, no, they do definitely. But yeah, no. Thanks for sending in all those images. Great stuff here from Where in the World. If you want to get involved, use the upload service. Details for that are up on screen. Okay, so while Chris is getting ready, we're going to go straight into Bike Vault. Uh, always the best bit of any of our weekly shows. So mm -hmm. first up is Lisa with her Focus Sam Two. Um, loving the sort of the frosty grass there. That was awesome. It does look super cold. It's got nice, do you think, Donny, or kicking off? Yeah, super, super nice. nice. Come on. Super nice. Kicking Start it off. the year with a, a good way to go. Check this out. This is Danny. Bit of an autumnal shot here. He's got a specialised turbo Levo S Works. He's out on Arendelle Park Trail. Fall on the forest floor, full of leaves. If Martin was here, he'd penalise it for not having drive side facing out. So I couldn't give it a super nice. On a nice, basis. is it? It's not. I mean, it's really super nice, but it's not. It's, it's a nice this time. <laughs> Okay, next up is from Rick. This one's a higher bike Enduro 3.0 with upgraded parts in the Netherlands. Looks like the UK. Nice. It does it? look just like the UK, doesn't it? I was going to say that. It's got uh, some big stoppers on there from Maguro, 203 uh, a mil brake rotors on there. Got those Chrome bars. XL mud gods. Yeah, he's got They're some actually nice amazing in the mud because you can raise them up and they don't get Perfect, up. aren't they, yeah. for e-bike use. Uh, I think that's got to be a nice as well. Next up we have, well, the back end of that bike looks Funky, doesn't it? It looks like almost like the swing arm snapped to me. Does it not look like that to you? Like the wheels lent over? I think that disgusting mud guard has sort of dis you know, distracted you. Or is it on a fisheye lens? It's something weird going it, on with the shot. Yeah, because yeah, like the tree's bent as well, isn't it? I know those mud guards are really good. I've got friends that use them, but <laughs> come on, they've got a face for radio, haven't they? <laughs> yeah. Simon with his 2019 Canevo's and La Lady Bow in Derbyshire, out doing a winter ride with loot, uh, with friends on a big loop. Uh, awesome bike. You obviously got had a dry ass. we got them as well. Yeah. I get it. Completely. Nice, I think. Nice bull's hardtail, actually. Yeah. Colour coordination going on with the pedals there. Mm -hmm. Then up against that tree. Simon out in Hobart. Hobart. A bull's a bull's getting a bit more common. Like I, I don't I haven't really seen many around. Yeah, definitely. Like, a big range of e-bikes. Yeah, I know they're a massive brand from sort of stand at yeah. like um, Eurobike yeah. or one of the shows. Definitely getting a lot bigger. Bikes, yeah. yeah. So um, out for a ride with his daughter as well. So yeah, nice. I think nice shot. Very snowy. Uh, Bike vault this month. Uh, oh, week, Boardman with a Bafang motor. Check this mm -hmm. out. It's a, a homemade special. It is, yeah. I oh, love that. Pontus Hill in South Wales. Double mudguards on the rear. Double mud. Oh, yeah. Double crikey. protection. 
Normally you see those little mud guards to protect the rear shock, but obviously you haven't got that going on. Maybe I mean, I, I don't get to see bikes as customised and stuff like this. I guess mm. you guys do a lot. I'm going to give this a super nice because I just think it's cool that people are actually bothering to do this themselves. Exactly. Yeah, I think it's wicked. Next up, we've got Amelia here. She's got, uh, she's got a oh. 2019 Specialized Turbo Levo out yeah. in Nottinghamshire. Just added some pink extras, DMR death grips and DMR V6 pedals. I think that matches with the uh, special uh, logos as well, doesn't it? That's a super nice all day long for me. Definitely. And the final bike in the bike world, what have we got, Daddy? KTM with matching reflectors to uh, match into the, uh, the orange on there. <laughs> uh, that's super nice, to be fair. Yeah, from Philip. Great He's bike, KTM, awesome location. KTM Ride 27.1 out in Lineker Reservoir in the Peak District. I, th I thought nice. the orange mudguards weren't legal in the UK. I might be completely wrong, but I thought orange white mudguard. ones, I thought, uh, oh. Sorry, uh, reflectors. Oh, right, okay. Yeah, I thought the orange reflectors were uh, for Europe, but not okay. UK. And oh, white okay. ones are for the UK. I might be completely yeah, wrong, because yeah. no, the first I thing I'll do is I'll break them off and <laughs> recycle them, to be fair. But. but yeah, some strong entries in there, obviously, for the bike. Well, loads of super nices and nices going on. Don't forget, if you want to get involved, use that upload service. But that is it for this week's show. Thanks for joining me, oh. Doddy. Get involved in the comments box down below. Let us know what you think about that new Rossi e-bike. Oh, know, man. Looks it's cool, nice, isn't it? Isn't it? Yeah. Special, nice. uh, special limited edition one. It looks Definitely. great. It's not specialised. <laughs> it's more like a Trek, as we said earlier. I think so. <laughs> Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed today's show. Make sure you subscribe to us here on EMBN and check out our merch shop whilst you're there subscribing to the channel. And we shall see you next week. See you later.